The situation in Ukraine's conflict with Russia is becoming increasingly dire, according to reports from Bloomberg and other sources. An unnamed U.S. official told Bloomberg that the possibility of Ukraine's army collapsing cannot be dismissed. The report highlighted several factors contributing to Ukraine's vulnerability, including a severe shortage of ammunition, declining morale among Ukrainian soldiers, and delays in U.S. aid due to political gridlock in Congress. There are concerns about the weakening of Ukraine's defense lines, with Russia making incremental advances in eastern Ukraine. Ukrainian Prime Minister Denis Shmyhal announced plans to allocate additional funds to reinforce fortifications, but there are doubts about the effectiveness of these efforts. Russian military capabilities have rebounded quickly, with top U.S. General Christopher Cavalli warning that Russia has replaced its losses faster than anticipated. Ukraine's air defense systems are also showing vulnerabilities, with critical infrastructure facilities being targeted by Russian missiles and drones. President Volodymyr Zelensky has been vocal about the urgent need for more assistance from the U.S., warning that without congressional support, Ukraine risks losing the war. Despite ongoing delays in Congress, Zelensky remains hopeful for a positive outcome and has suggested that Ukraine would be open to receiving aid as a loan rather than a grant. Colonel General Oleksandr Sursky, Ukraine's army chief, highlighted the deteriorating situation on the Eastern Front in recent days, with Russia intensifying its armored assaults. This escalation comes amidst ongoing delays in receiving vital U.S. military aid, leaving Ukraine more vulnerable to attacks. Sursky noted that Russian forces, taking advantage of favorable weather conditions, have increased their offensive actions following Putin's re-election. Despite suffering significant losses, Russian forces have occasionally made tactical gains. Reports of the fall of Bodenivka, a village west of Bakhmut, were denied by Kyiv's defense ministry, though it acknowledged fierce fighting in the area. Russian assault groups are targeting key Ukrainian strongholds, including Chasiv Yar, and positions in Lyman and Bakhmut, using tanks and armored personnel carriers. Sursky emphasized the need for a technological advantage and better training for Ukrainian soldiers to counter the better equipped Russian forces. Additionally, Ukraine's parliament recently passed legislation to overhaul the armed forces draft system and lowered the draft age to 25. Speaker Mike Johnson, RLA, is preparing to address the contentious issue of providing aid to Ukraine, a topic with significant implications for both Ukraine's sovereignty and Johnson's political future. Despite his commitment to delivering additional military assistance to Ukraine, Domestic priorities and political obstacles have delayed action on this front. Now, with these immediate concerns addressed, Johnson plans to introduce a package of emergency foreign aid, including support for Ukraine, Israel, and Indo-Pacific allies. However, navigating this debate presents challenges for Johnson, as he risks alienating conservative members of his party who oppose further cooperation with President Biden. On the other hand, Democrats insist on passing a Senate bill combining aid for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, emphasizing the urgency of providing support to Ukraine. Johnson's strategy for reconciling these competing interests remains unclear, though he has asserted the importance of addressing border security in any aid package, a stance that may further complicate negotiations. Failure to include border reforms could provoke backlash from conservatives, potentially jeopardizing Johnson's leadership position. Furthermore, Johnson's recent handling of legislation concerning surveillance authority has drawn criticism from both Democrats and hardline Republicans, intensifying scrutiny of his leadership. Despite mounting pressure, Johnson may secure his position and advance aid to Ukraine by pursuing bipartisan support for the Senate-passed bill a move that could both safeguard his speakership and demonstrate commitment to supporting Ukraine. The recent drone attacks on the Zaporizhzhia nuclear power plant in Ukraine have raised grave concerns, prompting the head of the UN nuclear watchdog to call for an immediate cessation of such attacks. Rafael Grossi, Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, warned that these attacks represent a dangerous escalation in the conflict and urged the IAEA's Board of Governors to unanimously support measures to prevent further incidents at the plant. The attacks, which occurred on Sunday, targeted the reactor building of Europe's largest nuclear power plant. 
While nuclear safety was not compromised, the incident has heightened tensions between Russia and Ukraine, with both sides accusing each other of responsibility. Grossi emphasized the need for swift action to prevent the situation from deteriorating further, stressing that such strikes must cease. In response, Russia's representative to international organizations in Vienna criticized Grossi for not explicitly blaming Ukraine for the attacks. He accused the IAEA of creating an atmosphere that could encourage further reckless actions by Ukraine. However, he expressed hope that there would be no more incidents in the future. Ukraine, on the other hand, dismissed Russia's accusations as part of a long-standing disinformation campaign. The Ukrainian statement to the meeting emphasized the seriousness of the attacks, stating that they represent a direct threat to the physical integrity of the nuclear facility. It denounced Russia's attempts to shift blame and called for international support in holding the responsible parties accountable. Israel is on high alert amid intelligence assessments indicating the possibility of a direct and unprecedented attack by Iran on Israeli government targets potentially triggering a regional conflict. Western intelligence sources suggest that the attack, possibly involving drones and precision missiles, could occur within the next 48 hours. The United States is bolstering defenses in the region and intensifying diplomatic efforts to de-escalate tensions. While Iran has not officially approved the attack, it is seen as a potential retaliation for a recent strike on an Iranian diplomatic compound in Syria, which Iran blames on Israel. Israeli forces have reported rocket launches from Lebanon and intercepted explosive drones from Hezbollah. A direct conflict between Israel and Iran would significantly escalate tensions in the Middle East, already heightened by recent clashes between Israel and Hamas. Diplomatic efforts are underway to prevent further escalation, with Western officials warning of the risk of wider conflict if tensions continue to rise. President Joe Biden has expressed concerns about an imminent Iranian strike on Israel amid escalating tensions following the bombing of Iran's consulate in Damascus. The U.S. is moving troops and assets to the Middle East to deter potential attacks and protect American personnel in the region. Gen. Michael Eric Carrilla has expedited his trip to Israel, and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has reaffirmed the U.S. van's commitment to Israel's security. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is engaging with counterparts in countries with diplomatic ties to Iran to discourage military escalation. The U.S. believes Iran may retaliate against Israel using drones and missiles, prompting new restrictions on U.S. personnel in Israel. The recent strike on an Iranian facility in Syria has heightened concerns about a widening conflict in the Middle East. France has issued new travel warnings for its citizens and government personnel in the Middle East due to concerns about a potential imminent attack by Iran on Israel. The French government advises against travel to Iran, Lebanon, Israel, and the Palestinian territories in the near future. French diplomats' families in Tehran are urged to return to France, and missions to the mentioned regions are put on hold. This action follows similar security directives from the U.S. to its staff in Israel amid heightened tensions. Iran has threatened retaliation for a suspected Israeli strike in Syria that killed several Iranian military advisors, prompting President Biden to caution Iran against any attack on Israel. Amid escalating tensions in the Middle East, the U.S. Embassy in Israel issued a security alert restricting personal travel for government employees and their families to certain areas. This decision follows an Israeli airstrike on an Iranian embassy building in Damascus, Syria, which raised concerns about retaliation from Iran. The alert advises against travel outside the greater Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, and Be'er Sheva areas, and may further prohibit travel to specific locations without advance notice. Iran has vowed to retaliate against Israel and hold the U.S. accountable, while Israeli leaders have pledged to respond to any attacks. U.S. officials are closely monitoring the situation and have engaged in diplomatic efforts to prevent further escalation. Iranian commandos from the Revolutionary Guard seized a Portuguese-flagged container ship associated with Israel, the MSC Ares, near the Strait of Hormuz. The attack comes amid escalating tensions between Iran and Israel, exacerbated by a suspected Israeli strike on an Iranian consulate in Syria. The ship's owner, Zodiac Maritime, declined to comment. 
Iran has engaged in a series of ship seizures and attacks in recent years, often targeting vessels linked to Israel. Western governments have issued warnings to citizens in the region, and President Biden has cautioned Iran against attacking Israel. The Gulf of Oman, where the seizure occurred, is a crucial waterway for global oil trade. Argentina's highest criminal court has attributed responsibility for the 1994 bombing of a Jewish community center in Buenos Aires to Iran and its proxy, Hezbollah. The attack killed 85 people and injured 300, devastating Latin America's largest Jewish community. The court concluded that the bombing was retaliation for Argentina canceling nuclear cooperation deals with Tehran. While the ruling lacked concrete evidence of Iran's direct involvement, it opens the door for victims' families to pursue legal action against Iran. Israel has urged Argentina to declare Iran's Revolutionary Guard a terrorist organization in light of the ruling. The decision comes after decades of investigations marked by setbacks, scandals, and allegations of cover-ups. While the ruling is seen as significant by Argentina's Jewish community, it serves as a painful reminder for the victims' families awaiting justice. The Defense Department is deploying additional troops and equipment to the Middle East amid concerns of a potential Iranian attack on Israel. The purpose is to enhance regional deterrence efforts and protect U.S. forces. Specific details regarding troop numbers and assets involved have not been disclosed. White House officials are closely monitoring the situation and engaging in discussions with Israeli counterparts to ensure their defense capabilities. Currently, the U.S. has approximately 40,000 military personnel in the Middle East, with an additional 1,000 troops being deployed to assist in humanitarian efforts in Gaza. The move follows a recent suspected Israeli strike on an Iranian diplomatic building in Damascus, prompting heightened tensions in the region. President Biden reaffirmed U.S. support for Israel's defense and emphasized that Iran's attempts to attack will not succeed. Venezuela confirmed a recent meeting with U.S. officials alleging a breach of a Qatar brokered deal by the Biden administration. The meeting in Mexico City reviewed previous discussions on sanctions and migration from last year in Doha. Venezuela criticized the U.S. for failing to adhere to the agreed-upon schedule for lifting sanctions. According to reports, U.S. representatives included Daniel Erickson of the National Security Council and Francisco Palmieri, chief of mission of the Venezuelan Affairs Unit. The encounter occurred just before the expiration of a U.S. license allowing Venezuela's oil and gas industry to operate without sanctions threats. President Maduro's actions, including barring opposition candidates from running in the presidential race, have strained relations. The U.S. faces a dilemma over whether to reimpose oil and gas sanctions during an election year. If sanctions are lifted, Venezuela could lose billions in oil revenues by the end of 2024. Belarusian authorities convicted the dissident rock band Niskis and its three members of extremism, sentencing them to two years of correctional labor. The band, known for its protest anthem, Rules, released during the 2020 mass protests against President Alexander Lukashenko's disputed election win. The government crackdown on dissent has resulted in thousands of arrests and violent repression. Niskis' designation as extremists bans their songs and exposes their fans to prosecution. The band's members have been in custody since January 2024, facing political prisoner status according to human rights groups. Opposition leader Svetlana Chikanuskaya condemned the convictions as part of the regime's attack on Belarusian culture. China summoned Japanese and Philippine diplomats to express dissatisfaction over negative comments made about it during a summit involving the United States, Japan, and the Philippines. The summit discussed China's aggressive actions in the South China Sea and unveiled pacts to boost security and economic ties. China opposed what it called small group politics and any actions that increase tension, emphasizing its opposition to forming exclusive circles in the region. Chinese officials made solemn representations to Japanese and Philippine representatives over their, their leaders' remarks, expressing serious concern and strong dissatisfaction. The U.S. and Japan announced various projects and plans to upgrade their military alliance, condemning China's actions in the South China Sea. In a separate summit with the Philippines, U.S. President Biden warned of Beijing's moves in the region. Senator Sherrod Brown, 
chair of the Senate Banking Committee, has urged President Joe Biden to ban imports of Chinese-made electric cars to the U.S., citing them as an existential threat to the American auto industry. Brown's remarks, the strongest from any U.S. lawmaker on the issue, come amid calls for steep tariffs to restrict Chinese electric vehicles, EVs, from entering the country. In February, the White House initiated an investigation into whether Chinese cars pose a national security risk. Brown emphasized the need to prevent China from undermining the American auto industry with government-backed practices. Concerns have been raised about Chinese-made cars collecting sensitive data on drivers and passengers, potentially posing national security risks. China, the world's largest car producer, faces restrictions in the U.S., including a 27.5% tariff on vehicles. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen warned China against repeating the China shock of the early 2000s, prompting China to express concern over U.S. trade and investment restrictions. Additionally, major U.S. airlines requested the Biden administration to halt approvals of new flights between the U.S. and China, citing unfair competition from Chinese carriers. The trade tensions between the world's two largest economies have persisted since 2018, with tariffs remaining in place despite a decline in trade volumes between the U.S. and China last year.